Ah, perfect timing. I'm so pleased you could make it. Please, the servants will take your cloak and... Ah, uh, I see you've also brought your sword with you. How interesting. Oh, yes, I know. Force of habit, indeed. Well, perhaps we should also keep that somewhere safe for you whilst you're here. We wouldn't want any of the other guests to become concerned. Yes, very good. After all, this question is also a noble strength, I'm sure you'll agree. So, come through, out of this drafty hallway, and make yourself more comfortable. Well, everyone else has been here for at least an hour, but I see that you like to be, um, fashionably late. Is that the phrase? <laughs> no. No, it's quite all right. I know my mansion is not the easiest place to find, particularly in this damned, awful weather. And at night, too. Tucked away in a corner of the city, all those winding streets and dead ends. It's almost as if it was designed to be difficult to find. And to leave. <laughs> but anyway, here you are. But you look rather concerned. Is something the matter? Well, of course there are others here. It is a party, after all. <laughs> of course, I jest with you. The other guests are what you might call cover. A pretext, if you will. I specifically invited you on the night of my grand ball so that your coming here wouldn't arouse any suspicion. To any observer, you're just another masked reveler here for the canopies and sparkling conversation. Nothing more. You see, I'm sure you understand. This meeting must be kept under the utmost secrecy. It is vital. Ah, uh, your mask, by the way. Very good. Very good. If a little understated. Oh, mine? Oh, just a trifling thing. It's actually modeled on the face of one of the great elders. You can see his portrait in the great hall at the castle. He lived centuries ago. Yes, a ruthless and powerful man, if ever there was one. Such majesty, such control. His subjects cowered before him, and his courtiers hung upon his every utterance, as if their lives depended on it. <laughs> Which, of course, they did. <laughs> his like will probably never be seen again in this court. Anyway, let us retire to somewhere a little more private, and we can get on to the business at hand. Please, do sit. Now, I won't dally any further. You are no doubt very busy, and I'm sure you may already have an inkling as to why I have called upon you in this particular evening. No? <laughs> you are too modest. Well, allow me to explain. You see, I've seen your prowess as a leader of men. On the battlefield, you wield your army with the precision of a surgeon. Your tactical abilities are second to none, and, most crucially, I am reliably informed by my sources that your armies are so loyal as to follow you into the abyss if you so command it. That is a rare and true talent. It therefore follows that you are, in fact, the key to the success of what I am about to propose. 
Oh, my premise is very simple. The ruler of our land, the old king, has become a liability. No, don't look so shocked. You must have noticed the increasingly erratic nature of his decisions, the soft-headed pandering to ill-informed advisers who make him do their bidding without him even realizing it. I mean, giving away a small fortune in land to the peasantry as payment just because they toll in the fields and mills to provide bread? Ugh! There needs to be no recompense for that. It is their duty, as is their continued loyalty and subservience. But this kind of modern thinking puts that in danger. It causes people to start getting above themselves, to start thinking. And we both know where that can lead. Yes, revolution. And that, that is not to be tolerated under any circumstance. So, a decision has been made. Uh, amongst whom you do not need to know. But it has been decided that it would be the best course of action to allow the king to retire with dignity. Let the old man rest and live out his last years tending to his garden. I'm sure giving orders to his plans will suit him infinitely more. <laughs> then, in his stead, I will take on his responsibilities. Temporarily, of course. As Lord Protector, just as an interim measure, you understand. Until the necessary hairs have been tracked down, uh, books consulted and so forth. It will be a heavy burden, but one that I am willing to bear for the good of the kingdom. Now, the king is loved by the armies you command, that is certain. But what is also certain is that they respect you more. They bow to your judgment first and foremost. So, I would like to make absolutely sure that we are on the same page, as it were. That should any questions arise amongst the troops or the citizenry about this holy and completely necessary course of action, I can trust you to exercise control over the situation. Well, I'm not sure how I could be any clearer. You must realize that this is an essential factor. The armies must, will, be behind this effort. It is, after all, for the sake of the future of the kingdom. You wouldn't want to jeopardize that. You are sworn to protect the kingdom by any means at your disposal. And you surely must agree that things cannot continue as they are, don't you? <sighs> your loyalty to your king is touching, but misguided. Perhaps you have been away on the battlefield for too long. You do not see what those of us at the court see. Day in, day out. The diminishment, the failing faculties, the slow decay and putrefaction of a once great leader. And besides, there would undoubtedly be rewards for your help. Fine rewards, you know. I have often thought you would make an excellent Lord Patrician. Now, that is a title worthy of you. You would have control over the entire population of this great city, not just the army. You would want for nothing, and there would be plenty of opportunities for self-advancement, if you understand me. Riches far beyond anything you could hope to gain in your current position. 
and more besides that, if you so wish. And the people, oh, they would so love and respect you that any hint of insurrection would be simply unthinkable. <laughs> it would be perfect. So, will you at least consider my proposal? Well, I can see that your mind is made up. Are you sure there's nothing that would persuade you otherwise? Very well. Consider the matter closed and forgotten. It was merely an idea. Well, whilst we're here, we may as well enjoy ourselves. Care for uh, brandy? Excellent. There we are. You know, you know, this brandy was a gift to me from the Count of Brasov himself. That was, of course, before all the um, unpleasantness he got himself into. Such a scandal. Do you recall? Oh, no. You never were once for court intrigue, were you? Well, rumor had it that he was involved in a plot against the ruler of one of the dukedoms. Yes, indeed. Next thing anyone knew, he just simply disappeared. Of course, there are all sorts of rumors and legends, but really, no one knows to this day exactly what happened. Well, almost no one. <laughs> he was too trusting as well. And just like you, he couldn't see the offer of a lifetime when it was right under his nose. A fool with too much pride and too much loyalty to a dying dynasty. <sighs> but that is of no consequence now. Oh, but you seem to be looking a little sleepy. <laughs> All these parties are so tiring, aren't they? <laughs> Or perhaps it's something in the brandy that's making your eyelids feel so heavy, causing all sensation to be lost, slowly drifting into a quiet stupor. Oh, don't try to fight it. <laughs> what a shame. And, frankly, what an embarrassment. Another reveler who partook of too much brandy and had to be ushered away discreetly to sleep it off. <laughs> Except, when all my other guests have left, I'm going to be keeping a special eye on you. You can be sure of that. <laughs> Are you feeling weak? I can see the fear in your eyes, and... Every muscle straining to lift you out of that chair. Yet, you cannot. <laughs> you didn't really expect me to just let you go on your way after what I've told you, did you? Let alone allow you to have your beloved sword back. Ugh. No. We will meet again when you are awake when I will explain to you exactly how you are going to help me achieve my aim, whether willfully or not. Ah, oh, you are such a fool. You could have had it all just handed to you. But you had to choose the difficult way. Perhaps by morning you will have learned to swallow your foolish pride and do what is best for your own survival. Hmm. No matter. 
Either way, this will all be more enjoyable for me. <laughs> Sleep well, Commander. For tomorrow, your very own battle begins.